If I had one pound for every time I got asked where Count Dooku is in my Lego Star Wars minifigure collection, I'd have enough money to buy an official Lego minifigure. But today we're going to be taking a look at not just a custom Count Dooku, but a custom Count Dooku I can almost guarantee you do not have in your collection. And here he is. Now before you click off because you've seen Dooku and that's all you came here for, I'd like to make you aware there are going to be four characters throughout this video. I think nine, ten minifigures. So definitely stay tuned for the others or at least flick through if you don't think you're going to sit and watch the whole thing. But Count Dooku here isn't any sort of minifigure that LEGO has released. In fact, this torso is completely designed by me. And though it is based on the First Order, I think it's the General in the blue uniform, I have, as you can see, blacked out the belt buckle and added Dooku's little monogram on it, his initials in his home language. Because of course, with the Count's position, he had to have monogrammed pajamas. And we will take another look at that in a second, but I thought while I was printing off Dooku's, I might as well custom make an original Dooku with the face and the body from the last Lego one. And this hair is completely 3D printed. I've sanded it a little bit just to get some of the rough textures down, but I actually quite like the different layer lines you can see. But I know that's not an opinion that's shared by most people. A lot of people prefer the smooth textures of the Lego brick. And if you do want to see some customs printed with resin, which gets rid of all these layer lines that an FDM printer does have, Go check out the scrap box. He made a video just over a week ago on improving Lego's big fig for the Red Hulk in the new Captain America movie. And it is a really great video. But let's get back to Count Dooku. So now that we have both Dooku outfits, I think I'm correct in thinking these are the only two he wears through the prequels. There is the one from Tales of the Empire, which I have to add to my collection. But I'm just happy I've got any Dooku's at all. Because before recording this video, I didn't have a single Dooku in my collection. And I really hope they release another one next year so that I can have an updated Dooku. And it'll be interesting to see if they give him pupils. Plus, I now have a ton of Dooku hairs that I printed. So let me know any other Star Wars characters that use the same white combed back hairpiece. A minifigure that did need updating, and this is a segue onto our next Star Wars character is my custom Sig Fig, which, yeah, it didn't look like me. I mean, you can see with the like animation, that is still the same as my original profile picture. So perhaps now that we've got this figure, I'll have to update it. But I think this looks a lot more like myself. You can see side by side with a clip from earlier on in the video. Not only does Cassian's face Worked well, great for me towards the end of the week. I guess I've had a shave today, so it's not too close. But also the hair on the back. Rather than chopping up Qui-Gon's, you pointed out... I've got to thank the comments so much. Shout out to all of you pointing out that Will Turner's hairpiece, and it was actually used on an old Star Wars minifigure as well, would work perfectly. It's basically Qui-Gon's hairpiece with the front bit chopped off. So thank you to everyone who pointed that out to me. And you can see here my process to getting the hairpiece printed. First off, we had to 3D print it, and there is a little bit of waste underneath, but we're looking at barely a gram of plastic for this. So each of these would have cost, I don't even think they cost a full penny. And then I would color match with the Lego piece, and I come across this reddish brown. I didn't actually have to mix with anything that looks very close to Lego's version. And that does mean the inside is white, but as it's going to be around the Lego head, you can't see it. And I thought I'd just quickly show you the process of printing. If you do want to know more, I do have a video up for members that dives a little deeper. And there's also one for the decals that I make. But once again, I have quite a few of these hair pieces. You'll notice not as much. I think I do have 10 of these. And there is only six or seven here. Because the Star Wars character that it was used on is this Clone Wars Padme Amadala, which has recently resurfaced in the Coruscant Guard gunship. And I must say, I think the hairpiece works really, really well for her. In the Clone Wars, I don't know if I'll be able to find an image of her hair, but it looks like she's got it banded up a few times on the back. And it isn't the knot bun that Lego give her. So I'm happy to have upgraded the Clone Wars version's hair. This is not Padme's headpiece as well, because I've taken the head and hairpiece and added it to a custom Geonosis 
Arena, Padme and Adala. And the reason this is custom is, first off, how well do Luke's farm boy legs work for this minifigure with the tan boots at the bottom? If we ever get a dual molded, in fact, when we get a dual molded farm boy Luke, because we're bound to get a load more land speeders and there's only so many times they can improve the set. I'm definitely going to be revisiting this and giving Padme some dual molded legs with Luke's boots on the bottom. And then I've just painted a strip over the hip piece there to represent her belt and printed some of the well the torso front and back from the Skywalker Saga game classic Skywalker Saga game print and stick which I've done for a few other minifigures then added the Padme head and hair from the Clone Wars minifigure that we just took a look at and this isn't the only version that I've got because if we're counting hair changes as a costume change for Leia I think the ripped Geonosis Arena torso has to count for a brand new costume. So I now have that to add to my collection as well as the Mustafa outfit, which is, I believe this is a screenshot of a Grandpa Clone Customs figure that looks so, so good, but it's not available anymore. It was a limited sale quite a few years ago. Now I'm not quite sure exactly when it was on sale, but I didn't manage to pick it up so I've added some dual molded white and black legs to get Padme's leggings with her black boots that she wears so often. Black or brown boots that she wears all the time basically throughout the prequel. So a Padme figure definitely needs them dual molded legs. And this is when she confronts Anakin on Mustafar, an amazing figure. There'll definitely be a few mocks with this minifigure. In fact, there'll probably be a few mocks with all of these Padme minifigures next year. But the only problem I have at the minute is that I don't own enough of either Padme heads or just female heads in general to give all of these Padme minifigures a head and hairpiece. So right now, two of them are missing heads and they do have technically the wrong hairpiece, but hopefully that'll be fixed by the time these pop up in their respective mocks. You've seen I've nicked Cassian's head, so what have I done for the original minifigure? Well, Lego released a set from Andor, the only set from season one. Hopefully we see at least one or a few more from season two. I was really hoping we'd get a few as the show was out. And that came with a brand new Cassian headpiece, which is actually a bit of skin tone for the Cassian Andor character. But I've just stuck that over and I think all of these are stuck over an angry clone trooper face because I have an abundance of them and I'm not gonna wipe off the face. I could give it a quick rub and wear down the ink, but in case I need them for a future video, because when couldn't you need a bunch of angry clone faces? I am keeping it in as good condition as I can, sticking the sticker on the other side. And I think this just represents Diego Luna's character a lot more and looks a lot more like the character in Rogue One, even though this is from the series and he does look a little different in the Rogue One movie. I would love to get my hands on the actual headpiece, but it only came in that one set and I don't own the minifigure. So it's a pretty pricey piece for an upgrade to an already pricey minifigure. And I'm not sure if any of you's picked up on this, but Dooku's two faces are the opposite sides to his Lego head. So I printed off both sides and used one for each of the minifigures. The angry expression's definitely a bit more fitting for the one with lightning in his hand. And I did the exact same thing with Andor. Instead of printing off the torso from the one set we got, I've actually used the head on the Mandalorian. So if we pop off his helmet, you will see the slightly disgruntled expression on Cassian's face. And I know this isn't the perfect face to use for Pedro, but until I get the actual headpiece, be it through the UCS set, one of the other sets that it's come in, or just ordering it off Brick Link, because Mando's a fairly common character. And I'm sure with the next season as well, similar to R2 with backprinting that I don't own yet, it's a common enough character that I'm gonna pick it up one day. So for now, this is just a piece holder, but I think it works pretty well. The final minifigure we'll be looking at is not a Star Wars figure, and is this classic space figure that I haven't matched the color perfectly. I did have to mix up this color myself. So that is a whole new thing. First off, we were 3D printing, then we were creating custom decals, and now we are trying to color match with official Lego colors. I definitely need to get my hands on one of those charts that has every single color, Lego name, Bricklink name, because that also makes it easy when I'm stocking up my Bricklink store. 
but I have printed off a classic space air tank and helmet. In fact, I do have another one of these because similar to how I got the color for my hairpiece, originally I was just gonna go with blue and that is a Benny blue. That is so, so much brighter than it should be. And then I started mixing colors. This is a bit darker. This is closer to a black. Let me see if I can get a bit closer up on that. And then I went with the final color, which is a bit more blue than the color on the backpack. And that's the one that I went with. So I decided just to print those pieces. In theory, I could always cover these in paint as well, but I'm pretty happy with how close I got to the color of the actual spaceman. You can see there are a few blue streaks throughout the helmet, but it's close enough for now. So thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I definitely know which angle I'm gonna be taking the thumbnail from for this video. Check out both of the others at the top of your screen, including the last video that saw an update of, I think it was something like 40 new costumes to my minifigure collection. I will briefly cover these in the next update video, but until then, may the bricks be with you always.